you choose to build up as finance becomes available, then you can start living on your land after your shell is up and the counters are closed, even with plastic film. If the priority for you is to do it without debt, then you can do it. In fact, a large percentage of people in our cold country start off with a shell that has no plumbing at all, no fresh water, grey water or sewage, no bathtub, no shower and no flushing toilet. Here is a quick startup strategy for you to get some basic amenities. The reason that I'm presenting this to you is so that you drop your fears and be confident to move onto your land faster than light. Washing your body. 1. Summertime. Start off with a thousand litre drum on the 2 metre tower. By painting it black you could have a warm water at the end of the day. The tank is filled up from a shallow well, a proper well or pond. Obviously a step up would be a black pipe that this water flows through and another step up would be a solar geyser. I will do a separate video on how to make this tower in one day. 2. Winter time. Tiny outdoor sauna with a metal oven that heats water and heats the stones. 3. Shallow, low cost well if your water table allows that does not freeze in winter. 4. Buckets or pump to get that water out into the water boiler inside the sauna. Okay, it's not working. <laughs> What seems to be the problem? Opa! <laughs> it's frozen. It's minus 15 Celsius. It's pretty cold. My mouth is not moving. This is empty, so it should be frozen just at the level of the water. And that little thing needs to be poured with hot water just so I could get it going. I'll try that. But first, I even can't even get it with a bucket out because there's the water. Of a hole so I can pull the pipe up. So where it gets into the water, that's, that's where a bit of ice is formed in the pipe. Obviously if water finds level, this is all empty because when the pump stops working, it goes down. Oh, 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 almost, yes, yes, it works, it works. Yes. Sauna has a shower tray that allows you to sit and wash yourself with all the water flowing freely into the garden. Scoop and pour on yourself or a small tank higher up that is filled up manually with buckets that now you rinse yourself with. 6. At minus 26 Celsius or minus 13 Fahrenheit, I installed a pump with pressure tank as per the water organizing module from Earthships. The lesson is already ready on the hub by the way. So this pump pressurized water from a 200 liter 50 gallon plastic barrel that was inside my home. The barrel got filled up from the same shallow well or any other water source. The pump pressurized water to an electrical boiler and of course this could be linked instead to some form of rocket stove or whatever if you do not have electricity from municipality. 10. The pressurized water gave us pressure to the normal shower. 11. If you have a couple of hours to spare, you can run a 2 inch 50 millimeter PVC pipe with gentle slope of 2 degrees or more that can automatically drain the water to your garden. If it is sloping downwards without up and down kinks, then the water will not freeze as warm water will always defrost any ice buildup. Next is toilet. Toilet is composting with sawdust, which is preferable, or even soil. We used bucket toilet for urine and went outside to compost toilet for number two. I have a great video on YouTube how to make your own human your composting toilet. Next is washing dishes and teeth. One, the water comes from the same shallow well or whatever water source you have identified. And B, this does not have to be pristine. Two, there is a kitchen sink station with a boiler right in it if you have electricity. Otherwise, heat water on solar or fire and pour it into this bucket above the sink station. In our country, they're very popular as water freezes outside. 3. If there is absolutely no plumbing, then the grey water goes into the bucket with a wider solar dish so you're here when it overflows. 4. You throw the bucket of grey water out into the garden with plants. And of course, you can run a 2 inch pipe to drain it into the garden automatically. This basic setup means that you have a shell even with plastic film instead of windows and you can already move in and stop renting and or camping. Okay, there is a problem. There's ice in the pipe. Man, 
have to put a hot water bottle in it. <laughs> Just to melt the ice because the water is not coming out. Pipes frozen indoors with a heater of 500 watt working the whole night. Okay, let's give it a bash. Yeah, it's working. And that's insane. Water freezes in the pipes indoors, that's something else. For an oven, you could use a cheap metal drum with a quick DIY door, and this will make sure that you will not freeze. By adding some uncemented bricks for a tiny bit of thermal storage will prolong the intervals between stoking your fire. Just sort out the water and a basic electrical system. If you have overcast winters, then you will need to be economical in, on electricity and have more solar panels and batteries. Still can be done relatively cheap. Don't be afraid. You don't have to get it perfect, you just have to get it going. The rest of the comforts can all happen one step at a time as finance become available. Can do it debt free and invest your resources into a business model that will generate income for the completion of your comfortable home. Yeah, Alosha has slightly transformed from the two years back look, to minus 24 Celsius, freaking cold, and I gotta work outside for a couple of hours. So, <laughs> no BS, but I'm really warm now. So what I'm gonna try and show was this last bit of surviving without running water and surviving without sewer, gray, without gray water systems. Everything I've taught in our abundance of water course, we arrived here, we bought this house in the middle of winter and it has no, none of those luxuries. So we have an outdoor toilet where we're just doing our thing in a big hole. I'm not too happy about it because it's close to it's upslope from our drinking water, so I need to test our drinking water and build a bicha filter for it because that's just marvelous. So I've already shown you how the washing machine works, where you pour water inside and then it does its thing and then you take the clothes out and put it in a nearby drum and you spin it and that thing just works amazingly. Um, but you just have to load it <laughs> three in a Wash once and rinse three times, and so it's semi-automatic living, I'd call it. The gray water is still gonna be pulled away manually for now, because we only have the outlet for the shower at one place, going out of the house. We still don't have the wetland or the septic. Obviously the ground is rock hard. That's just manually dropped in the garden. The pipe, after I finished putting it in, I got to get all the water out, blow it out so it's empty. If the pipe's got water inside and it freezes, I can't use it. <laughs> I have to get it inside the house, unfreeze, and then it shoots out a piece of ice, like my finger. Boom, 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 boom. And that's it. So taking responsibility and accountability for your actions, cause and effect. So once I'm done that, take all the water out, roll up, and I don't even roll up the pipe, I keep it straight to the house and I just take it out of the door because in, at minus 11 Fahrenheit, if you crook the pipe, you can't straighten it. It, 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 it can even snap and break. I already got a, a, a crack on a brand new pipe. And this is the third oven that's going to be burning today. So we would have gone today through four of these wheelbarrows of wood. Four. So by the time... Uh, 80 years of life would have cut down a, a reasonable size forest to heat ourselves and that is why I am um, thinking through um, a cold climate home that uses fraction of firewood if so of course for no sun condition where we have no sun for many months of the year a first lesson if you don't have time to sort your firewood out and it comes in the winter and it comes in wet uh, at least cover it with a piece of cloth. Show you a clever use of the knee in order to get heavy things lifted off. For example, here's this gas cylinder. And it's empty, but when it's full, it's very heavy. So I'm using my knee to counter lever it. Yeah? Because the most damaging part for the back is when you at that bottom stage. Once you're up, you're already up, you've got it, you know? Using my knee as a cleaver. 
I'm not pulling, I'm pushing. And pulling. 